Hey everybody, hope you're holding up well. In this video, we're going to start to go over the basics of propositional logic. As you recall, in the last video, we said that logic is the study of proper argumentation. That is to say, it's in the business of separating good inferences from bad ones. In that video, we also saw that the difference between deductive and inductive logic lies in the standards they apply in order to assess the quality of arguments inferences. In deductive logic, that standard that we apply is validity. A good argument involves premises that entail or logically guarantee the truth of the argument's conclusion. This is the standard of argumentation that we apply in mathematics and certain branches of philosophy. Inductive logic, by contrast, assesses arguments according to their inductive strength. That is, according to how probable the argument's premises render its conclusion. This standard allows us to recognize the quality of inferences comes in various degrees, all the way from strict deductive validity down to just being totally worthless. Inductive logic is going to be the sort of logic that is most important for various areas of human life, including medicine, law, business, public policy, all areas in which we often make inferences to conclusions whose truth is not strictly guaranteed by our premises, by the stock of knowledge that we have or that we're assuming. Now this is a course on inductive logic, but in order to do inductive logic well, we're going to need to learn some basic deductive logic first. And that's in part because probability theory, which is going to end up being our key tool when it comes to assessing the inductive strength of arguments, is built upon deductive logic, and in particular upon what's known as propositional or sentential logic. So these next videos are going to explore some of the basics of that system, that is the system of propositional logic. More specifically, in this video, we're going to look at what propositions are and how we can translate statements from natural language, like English, into the language of propositional logic. In the next video, we'll look at how to assess the validity of arguments once we've translated them into the language of propositional logic. OK, so let's get started. If we're going to study propositional logic, or really any sort of logic, the first thing we have to do is get at least somewhat clear about the notion of a proposition or a statement. So that's going to be our first goal. And you can see that as our first um, item in our outline for the video today. I should say from the start, if we go to our slides, I should say from the start that we're going to use the terms proposition and statement, at least for this course, interchangeably. And by a proposition or a statement, we're going to mean a sentence that makes a definite factual claim. So these are going to be what gets expressed in a typical declarative sentence of an ordinary natural language like English. These are entities that are truth apt, right? They're going to be the sort of things that we can apply truth and falsehood to. So let's consider some examples. So George Washington was the first president of the United States. That's a paradigmatic example of a statement. It's making a claim about George Washington that he was the first president of the United States. Right? This happens to be a true claim, right? a true proposition. Los Angeles is a city in California. Again, another proposition. It's making a claim about the city of Los Angeles. Shrek is an ogre. Again, another claim. Shrek is married to Fiona. Again, another statement. Now, you might at this point think, well, maybe all sentences in the English language count as propositions. But we got to be wary. Not all English sentences count as propositions or statements, because not all English sentences make definite factual claims. So we can think of some examples. Commands, right? Like execute order 66. Right? Uh, that's not a proposition. It's not a statement because it's not making any claim about how the world is. It's giving someone a direction or a command. Not the gumdrop buttons, right? That's also not going to count as a statement or a proposition. Uh, it's sort of an ex exclamation of whoa or um, you know an emoting on the part in this case on the part of Dingy. Uh, but it's not making any definite claim about how the world is, right? So it's not truth app. It's not the sort of statement that we would correctly describe as either true or false. 
So it doesn't get to count as a statement. Another major class of sentences that aren't statements are questions, right? Like to be or not to be. Right? It's asking a question about the world, but it's not making any assertion or, or claim about how the world is. So it, it too is not a state. Okay, now all the propositions that we've considered so far have been what we might call simple statements. Right? Um, simple statements are propositions or statements that you can decompose into two basic parts or two basic components, referring expressions and characterizing expressions. Referring expressions are expressions that identify the entities of interest in a statement. So they pick out the objects that we're discussing or talking about in a statement. So for example, in the statement, Shrek is an ogre, the word Shrek is a referring expression. It refers to the ogre Shrek. Or if we took a sentence like Fido is a dog, the term Fido would be a referring expression. It refers to the dog Fido, it picks out the object that we're interested in in the context of that sentence. The other component of simple statements are characterizing expressions, and these are the expressions that are used to make a claim about an entity that's being referred to in the statement. So for example, in the sentence, Shrek is an ogre, the predicate is an ogre would be a characterizing expression, an expression that we're using to characterize Shrek. Right? Or in the sentence, Fido is a dog, the predicate is a dog would be a characterizing expression. And we should note that some simple statements are constructed out of multiple referring expressions. For example, in our uh, example we had earlier, Shrek is married to Fiona, there were two referring expressions, right? Both Shrek and Fiona. We're picking out two entities of interest to the sentence, one being Shrek, the other being Fiona. And in this case, the characterizing expression, for example, is married to, is said to be a relational or many place predicate because it's connecting multiple referring expressions. So it's different than is a dog in the sentence Fido is a dog because there is a dog is just modifying or characterizing one entity that's being picked up by one referring expression, namely Fido. In this case, uh, is married to is connecting multiple referring expressions. This isn't a distinction that'll matter too much for um, our purposes in this course, but it would be something you discuss in more depth in certain other logic courses like the LPS 30 course. OK, now not all declarative sentences can be reduced to referential and characterizing components. That is, not all statements are merely simple statements. Some involve a third sort of expression, what we could call logical expressions. And those sort of statements we're going to call complex statements. Right? Now, there's various uh, logical expressions and, and words you might propose as constituting logical expressions. For our purposes and for the purposes of propositional logic, there are three terms that are going to be identified as our logical expressions. And those are the words and, or, and not. More advanced logical systems like predicate logic or various modal logic would add to this. There'd be other, other logical terms. Um, and so we'd be able to capture uh, or recognize a broader class of logical arguments and logical validities. Um, if we did a course like LPS 30 or some other logic courses at UCI, uh, we would delve more into that. But for our purposes, propositional logic is going to be adequate. So we're just going to focus on the logical expressions and, or, and not. Um, and what's going to end up being impressive is that we're actually going to get a lot of mileage out of this very simple logical system and that we can really base probability theory just off of this simple system of propositional logic. OK. So let's look at some examples of complex statements, right? We're just taking simple statements, and we're applying these uh, logical, connect logical expressions. We're also going to refer to as logical connectives. That's just another term I'm going to use for these words, and or not. Um, so for our first example, Shrek is an ogre and donkey is a donkey. It's taking the simple statements, Shrek is an ogre and donkey is a donkey, and it's conjoining them together in what we call a conjunction. Right? 
Shrek is an ogre, and donkey is a donkey. Right? We could also have a disjunction. That would be the second example. Right? Shrek is an ogre, or Shrek is a giant. Right? This is, again, combining two simple statements. Shrek is an ogre, Shrek is a giant, together with the word or. And we call that a disjunction. The third uh, example uses the term not, right? So this is what we call a negation. So Shrek is not a giant. It's taking the simple statement, Shrek is a giant, and it's negating it. It's saying that it's not true. OK. So now we've said a little bit about uh, the logical connectives of propositional logic. We want to say a little bit more about the language of propositional logic. Um, so these three connectives, and or not, are going to be so important to us that we're going to give them special symbols that will represent each of those terms, and or not. And simple propositions, or simple statements, we're going to represent using lowercase letters. So here, right, letters like T, Q, R, really any lowercase letters we'll use. If we need to use, if you run out of lowercase letters and you use more, you can start subscripting letters. Um, I gen we generally it will end up using letters that are in some way relevant. So maybe if it was a, you know, a simple statement is about Shrek, I might use the letter S to represent that statement. We'll work through some examples. So we're going to represent simple statements with these uh, lowercase letters. And then we're going to have, a, as I said, a special symbol for each of our logical expressions, for each of our logical connectives and or not. Um, there's wide variance in, in the notation that different te logic textbooks use. Um, we're going to follow pretty much the notation that's used in the Skirm textbook. Um, but uh, um, I may depart from it in, in, in slight ways that I'll, I'll, I guess I'll say now. So and we use this the and sign is how Skirm writes and. I also sometimes like to just put two propositions or two propositional variables together represent and. Um, so if you see me doing that, um, like I'll just write A and B right next to each other, I mean A and B. Um, that's the same thing as just writing A and then the and sign and then B. Um, hopefully if I do that in any of the future videos, I'll flag it for you so nothing's confusing. Um, or, I will always use this symbol for or, just the big V. And then not, Skirms uses the little uh, tilde sign. Um, uh, for or, just put that in front of a propositional variable. So you put this little squiggly line in front of, say, P, P and you get not P. Um, I also sometimes like to use the overline. Just take a, a propositional variable and draw a line over it um, to represent not. Uh, again, if I do that in any future videos, I'll, I'll try to flag it so nothing's confusing. Um, but you should know this, this notation for um, and, or, and not. Okay. So now let's get a little bit of practice in on translating sentences from English into the language of propositional logic. So here's an example of an English sentence. Shrek and Fiona live in the swamp. Okay? Now we want to translate this into the language of propositional logic. That means we have to identify what simple statements is this statement composed of, and what are all the logical connectives that are used in this statement. So first thing I always try to do is I look for the logical connectives in the statement. And here, I see pretty conspicuously and, right? It's right there. Um, so this is probably going to be a conjunction, right? And is a cue that this is going to be a conjunction. So this, this statement is really saying Shrek lives in the swamp and Fiona lives in the swamp, right? So I really have two simple statements. I have this simple statement that says Shrek lives in the swamp, and I have this simple statement that says Fiona lives in the swamp, and I'm conjoining them with the and connective. So if I wanted to write that out here, I could have a little key. Often that's when we're translating from English into propositional logic. We want to have a little key that tells us what letters we're using to represent what simple propositions. So here I could use a little letter S to represent that Shrek lives in the swamp, and the little letter F to represent that Fiona lives in the swamp. And then my translation of the original sentence would just be S and sign F, right? Representing that Shrek and Fiona live in the swamp. Okay? Not so bad. Okay, let's do one that's slightly more complicated. So here we have another English 
uh, statement or proposition. Trek either went with Donkey or with Fiona, but he did not go with both, right? So there's a few different things going on in this statement, right? We have the claim that Shrek went with Donkey, and we have the claim that Shrek went with Fiona. And the first part of the statement here, if we just ignore the second line, just look at the first line, Shrek either went with Donkey or with Fiona. That's a disjunction, right? It's taking the simple statement, Shrek went with Donkey, and it's conjoining it with the simple statement, Shrek with Fiona, by the or connective, right? So if we were to just translate this first part, it would be, let's say, we could use the letter D maybe to represent the proposition that Shrek goes, went with Donkey, and F to represent the proposition that Shrek went with Fiona. This first part then would be D or F, right? Now the second part, but he did not go with both, right? This might be a little bit tricky because we don't actually see an and uh, written here, but this is really a conjunction, right? It's really saying this first part is true, Shrek either went with Donkey or with Fiona, and this second part is true. He did not go with both. So oftentimes in English, the word but is really used like the word and. So it's really a conjunction. So we want to say Shrek either went with Donkey or with Fiona. As we said, we could write that as D or F. And then we want to say and he did not go with both, right? That is to say, it's not the case, bringing in negation, that, it's, that he went with Donkey that D proposition, and he went with Fiona, that F proposition. So if we were to write it all out, we could use again here a little key. So that we'll use D to represent the proposition that Shrek goes with Donkey, F the proposition that he went with Fiona, and we get this as our translation, right? Fundamentally, right, it's a conjunction at the, at the broadest level, right, between this first part, that Shrek either went with Donkey or with Fiona, and right, the second part, they did not go with both. Him not going with both, right, is a negation of the conjunction. Shrek goes with donkey and Shrek goes with Fiona. Right? Um, we'll get some more practice with the, this sort of translation too in the homework that'll be due uh, on Monday. You'll be translating a lot of arguments and sentences from English into propositional logic. Right. Okay, let's try another example. This time we're going to try to translate an argument into propositional logic. So here's a little argument. Shrek is either an ogre or a giant. Shrek is not a giant. Therefore, Shrek is an ogre. Seems like a pretty good argument, intuitively. So let's see how we could translate it. So the first, we have two premises. Shrek is either an ogre or a giant, and Shrek is not a giant, right? The first premise is a disjunction, right? It's a disjunction between two simple statements. The statement Shrek is an ogre, the statement Shrek is a giant. So I have written here my translation of the argument. So I said I used O in my key down here. O means Shrek is an ogre. G means Shrek is a giant. So I said the first statement is really saying Shrek is either an ogre or he's a giant. The second premise is just the negation of the giant statement, right? it's saying it's not the case that Shrek is a giant. The conclusion, which remember we oftentimes, when we're formally writing out arguments, we'll separate the premises from the conclusion by drawing a line between them. So that's what I've done here. And then the conclusion is just a simple statement that Shrek is an ogre. Okay, so this is an example of translating an argument from natural language into the language of propositional logic. Now, why would this be useful or why would we want to do this? Well, that's what we're going to start to explore in the next video where we're going to see how we can use propositional logic to assess the validity of this sort of argument, to figure out whether this general sort of pattern that this argument here is instantiating is a valid argument pattern. Um, so that'll be the topic of the next uh, video uh, where we're going to we're going to use truth tables to do that truth tables try to figure out whether or not these uh, argument patterns of propositional logic are valid um, so thanks for watching this video uh, don't forget to complete the participation poll and then go on to watch the next video on truth tables